Hi, and welcome to 3DMotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at the UV texture editor found within 3D Studio Max. So here's 3D Studio Max interface. This is a fantasy shield. It has a nifty little demon on it. Demon face, I should say. It's pretty low polygon. If I hit F4, you can see it's very low poly. In fact, I actually, I think I actually did this for a class, and it was hand painting textures too. Because all of this, the underlighting and everything else, that's just uh, hand painting. That's there's no effect on there. There's no special shaders. It's all just hand painted. But I thought this would be a good model to work from to get into our texture editor. All right, within 3D Studio Max, there's not a particular button I can click to get into the texture editor itself. 3D Studio Max wants you to first create a UV texture map, or if you have one, in this case it does, or if we've unwrapped it in some other program, we want to deal with the unwrapped UVs so we can arrange them as we need to in 3D Studio Max. Because there will be some times where you'll take a model and you'll, uh, you'll unwrap it in whatever other unwrap program you might have outside of 3D Studio Max, for instance. And then you want to bring in all those UVs and arrange them onto a one-to-one -one UV texture space in 3D Studio Max. So in order to do that, we need to add a modifier. In this case, it's what's called an Unwrap UVW. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to this little tab here. It says Modifier List. If we click the arrow, just scroll down, and you'll see right here, you have UVW Map, and we have Unwrap UVW. We want the Unwrap UVW. As soon as we do that, we have access to our UV Editor. Here's the button right here in, in Edit UVs. If I select that button, comes up with this. This is our UV texture editor. This is what it comes up as a default. Kind of this might be hard to see some of the stuff on the checkerboard background. This is what comes in as a default. Let's just go ahead and add the texture that's for this particular model. I'm just going to go up to this pattern right here. See it says check pattern. I'm going to click it because there's an arrow key and it allows me to do so. And I'm just going to add in the diffuse color. There we go. All right, so let me go ahead and move this off to the one side so you can see a little bit better. All right, so now we have our model, and this is the one-to-one -one UV texture space right in here. If by chance, when you're working with your UVs, and let's say you know you're getting into some of the verts, the vertices, etc., and you don't want to see your texture constantly, you can click this little button here. That's showing the active map, the the particular map for this particular model. Once you click that off, you can easily see here's the UVs for this particular model. This is the head, the front face of the shield, back face of the shield, a couple horns, and the bones that are here. In fact, I can see this is an older model, so I actually have a couple of unwelded verts. I don't know when those went off, but obviously they did. So what I'm going to do, and you can tell they're unwelded because I shouldn't have this the green is the the border of your islands. These are called UV islands. Your, your particular elements, when it's like this, this is called a UV island. I shouldn't be seeing this within a UV island like this. So what I'm going to do is go to Tools and go to Target Weld. I'm just going to left click on that vertice and it's saying, okay, we're going to move it. We're getting ready to weld. When I move it to the right vertice, see how that little crosshair becomes white, that's when I'm good to go. I can let it go. It just welded it. Same thing over here. Let's go ahead and weld that. There we go. Go to Tools and get out of Target Weld. Keeps it nice and simple. By the way, zooming in and zooming out in the UV Texture Editor is my using my wheel mouse, my middle mouse. I can just zoom in and zoom out as I need to. Panning around is my middle mouse and I'm just holding it down just holding it down. Now this is a 2D view if I get into if I just try to rotate the model which I'm just doing by left clicking and dragging I'm just actually selecting vertices because this is a flat 2D representation of a 3D model which is in our viewport on the left here alright so you can't rotate around this per se you can zoom in you can pan around you can zoom way in till I'm down to the vertice but you, that's about all you can do with this, and that's fine. We don't need anything more than that anyway. Let's go ahead and I'm going to toggle the texture back on.
So there we go. All right, one of the best features in the texture editor, and one that I that I say, guys, get used to it, learn it, use it. You'll be so happy with it. Is this button right here, the Select by Element toggle? Now, what happens is, if I'm grabbing my vertices, you can see, if I want to grab the vertices of this face. I have to go in and kind of rope an area around it, but now I'm getting a lot of vertices I don't need. In order to deselect those, I need to hold my Alt key down, and I now have to go in and, you know, deselect those vertices, and I have to go in over here and do the same thing. And it can be a little time consuming, especially if you have a lot of different UV islands. However, if I turn on my Select by Element, all I need is just grab like a single vertice, and it grabs everything at once. I love that. I can now go ahead and move this around, and as you can see, it's actually affecting my model on the left in the viewport. I can move it over here, or whatever. All right, I'm going to hit Control Z just so we can move it back in. That's the beauty of this. I can do this with our edges. If I select a single edge, it grabs the whole piece. Single edge grabs the whole piece. The face, I can do the same thing with that. Grab a single face, it grabs everything. I cannot recommend this enough. It's awesome. It's extremely interactive, very quick. So learn that one. That's that's one that is actually invaluable, the select by toggle, the select by element toggle. I, I use it all, almost, I can't tell you, 90% of the time I have that on so I can grab my vertices and do what I need to do with it. One of the nice things is once you've grabbed, let's go ahead and turn this back on. Once you've grabbed a piece, for instance, or let's grab it by the vertices so we can see a little bit better. There we go. I can do some automatic things with this. If I want to rotate the, the faces at a 90 degree angle, right here we have rotate around. We can rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. So if I click on this, you can see how that just up, uh, it updated on the viewport. I can do it again. Click in the viewport, it's updated. Now it's upside down. And click it again. It's updated. And click it one more time. And it's updates right back to what we started one. Great little tools right here. I use them a lot. I'm going to turn off the wireframe or, or the texture right now. I'm going to get out of the element. Let's say these lines here, we need them to be 100% straight, 100% horizontal. Okay, these and we need these to be 100% vertical, okay? The easiest way to do that, you could go in I can lock. This is a locking function. I can lock that. I can go up. This is our scaling tool. Anytime you see a little arrow, it means you can left click and hold. And you can see I can scale vertically, or I can, or I can scale horizontally or vertically. So if I grab that one, then I can come in and I can just straighten it up. You see how that just straightened up beautifully? But even quicker than that, what I can do is I can grab this and I can use this function right here, the align horizontal. If I do that, it aligns it all instantly. Oops, and I didn't select one. That's fine. We're just going to go ahead and add that and then do it again. Perfect. Let's grab these. I'm holding down my control key to, to add on. And I'm going to do it vertically. And just straighten it out. There will be models you, when you're working on them, you need them to you need to have like the symmetrical center line. That That's the quickest, easiest way to do it. The line vertical, align horizontal. This locking function comes in handy. I can't tell you how many times. Uh, one of the nice things is if I'm going to, let's go ahead and turn on our texture. If I want to grab, say, the faces here, and I want to move them around, let's get to our Move tool. If I click and drag, OK, you can see how it's affecting the model in the viewport. But let's say I'm just trying to move it out a little bit, and then, oops, i got to move something else, though, and now I click out down here. Oh, now how to get back to those and grab, oh, now I have to re-grab them, you know, etc. So what you can do, one of the really nice things is if I grab certain vertices, I can lock. Now I, it doesn't matter where I am. I can be over here. But if, I'm, if those things are locked, that's what I'm getting to move. And that's a nice little feature in the texture editor that allows you very specific... Uh, moving and shaping and rotating as you need to. Let's say really quickly, we're going to grab the face again and I'm going to lock it. Let's say we want to rotate it, but we don't want it 100% 90 degree vertically, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. We can get to our rotate tool, zoom in, 
And now with this all locked, it doesn't matter where I am, it's going to grab, you can see our center point, I can now just rotate this. See how it's affecting it in the viewport on the left? So I can rotate this all around to whatever I want. Okay. Great feature. This locking mechanism is a really great feature. Very quickly, so you have the different you have your move, that's this particular icon, so you can move your, your vertices around. You have your rotate, which is here, so you can rotate around. We have our scale. If we, I left click and hold, I can go back to our uniform scale and I can scale this up and down. See that? What great functionality on the left hand side in the viewport. So I can scale it up and down. Or I don't tend to use the freeform mode, but I do use the mirroring a lot. So if you've got stuff that's mirrored or you need to mirror things, this is a really great feature. And again, if I click on it, not a whole lot changed, but it did actually, watch how it does change because I am mirroring it slightly different. There you go. You see how the lighting is different? Now the lighting matches what, it, what everything else is, but it didn't right there. See that? But again, it has a little arrow, so it means I can left click and hold, and I can do it uh, horizontally, or I can do it vertically. Okay, so we've got all of that going as well. Okay, uh, also, by the way, one other really great function, let me show you really quickly. I love this one. If I grab some vertices, I can easily grow them by clicking this little plus. Okay, or I can do like over, actually you can do it this way as well. You have different different uh, axes. One is the loops, one, are, one is the rings, and one is the actual UV, the actual selection. So I can actually grow this out. If I was on vertices or edges, I can do the same thing. I can just grow it out. You see that? I can also shrink it. You see how it's shrinking down now. Faces, I can grab just some faces. I can grow them up, or I can shrink them down. Lots of great ways to select your vertices, edges, and polygons in the UV editor in, in 3D Studio Max. Anyway, I hope this has been fun. It's been a very, very quick introduction to the UV texture editor in 3D Studio Max. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thank you very much for watching.